Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. It's your boy Serrano. Today we're going to be doing 42 tips and tricks with the G91 Pro from Blue. And this is a really solid smartphone. So let's just jump into the 42 tips. Make sure you stay to the end of the video so you don't miss any tips. But if you're new to the channel, I truly appreciate you for coming through. But if you're already a part of the crew, salute. Now this video may be a bit long at, once I'm finished, so make sure you make sure to take breaks in between. I'll put some spots in between the video where you could actually take a break, right? Because mental health is the biggest, uh, you know what I'm saying, wealth in the 2020 and everything like that. All right, so the first tip is the, the clock, inside of the clock, right? And when you go inside of the clock, there's gonna be something inside of there called bedtime settings, right? And basically what that means is that you could choose different sounds when you're going to sleep that will help you go to sleep better and you could set like alarm clocks. Right now I had like the rain one, right? But you could actually choose another different sounds, as many sounds as you want. You, I downloaded this app called Calm and they have a bunch of meditation ones where you could actually, they got waterfall, you know, a bunch of other options. And they also do have Spotify where you could actually fall asleep to a song or even Pandora or something like that. Or, you know, I mean, you could just create your own sounds right here, which I thought was pretty sweet, sweet as well. Another thing that's pretty cool is when you're browsing the web, all you have to do is swipe up with three fingers and it'll split the screen for you. And then once you split the screen, you can multitask with any other application that you do so desire, right? And it's gonna give you the split screen window and you could use that in vertical or a horizontal mode, right? And it will give you that split screen window so you can basically do multitasking on two different windows, which is pretty cool. Now, another thing that I thought was pretty cool that I did want to mention is the dark mode feature, because now they have that timed, right? You could schedule that and it, it'll be, you could set it for sunrise, sunset, or you could do it for, schedule it for 6 a.m. to 12, 10 p.m. Or you could change the time to whatever you prefer. Now, another thing inside a display is changeable wallpaper lock papers, right? Because when you have that turned on, every time you, you lock the screen and open it up, there's going to be a different wallpaper or lock screen, which is really sick, right? Because you'll never get bored of the lock screens that you're looking at. So I definitely like this feature when it comes to those lock screens. It's just really sick that has different ones that you can actually choose from. And just keep in mind that you can change the colors, uh, the color mode, the screen color mode to vivid standard or cool color and to my eye it seems that the vivid one is the best one in my personal preference but that could be something that changes based on your personal preference now something that's kind of crazy on here is if you go into accessibility right and you go into color correction you could actually uh set it to be like your preferred color choice i have it at dirt do i can't say that but they have, they have this option right here called color correction shortcut where you can swipe with two fingers. And so let me just show you kind of what I'm talking about. I kind of want to go to something that has color to it so you can see the, the colors to it and everything like that. And let's just jump into the colors on here. So you can see this picture has like a lot of blue to it. The color inversion feature, you just take your two fingers and put it in the middle and then swipe up. And then you can see that the color changed to a like a different type of color. See, like, let me do that again. So you can see it's more bright right there. And then it's more dim right there. So based on your the color of your, if you like it to be less bright on your eyes, you could leave it at this darker color. But if you type that person who likes saturated colors and for them to punch out, you could leave it at this color option. So I kind of think that's a cool feature because you can either long hold it with two key, with the with the two keys and get that option, or you could save it with the swipe finger. And I have it set for the swipe finger option, which will you can see right here it's turning that on and off, which is the the use color correction, which is kind of cool. So another useful feature can be found inside of display, and basically it's for your lock screens. So once you're inside of the lock screen settings, go to go right here lock screens. And this is where you can add text to your lock screen. So you could put your name, you know, phone number, 
or something like that. But when you say when you lock the phone and unlock it, you're gonna see your 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 name right here at the top near the time and stuff like that. So I thought that was pretty cool. And then you can also add users to lock screen from this option. So you know you could ha have that shortcut there as well for when you want to change uh, the user on your device just as a shortcut as well. And essentially all you have to do from the lock screen is swipe from the, you could swipe all the way down right here and then just hit that one that looks like a face and you can add guests or other users to your device from the lock screen window. And one more thing that's really cool about this device is you do have this option where you can do screencast right here from your device, which will basically take your smartphone and the content that's on here and you compare it along to a smart TV or something like that. You can get more settings here and you can enable the wireless display option. But you, right there, you saw that the cast option just started to work right here. It'll actually locate the TVs that are in your, your room. So let me just show you. It takes about a minute to appear on here. So right here, you can see it is recognizing that I have a 32 inch Roku TV. Then there is a 55 inch Roku TV. So basically when you actually hit that, it's going to connect your device to the Roku TV and it'll actually ask you if you want to connect it from the TV. So you have to actually get the remote from the TV now and hit allow and then it'll actually pair it to the TV and everything like that. All right guys, so the next option that I'm going to talk about is going to be found in your intelligent assistant options right here. And this is where you have flip to wake, right? So you have, li I'm sorry, not flip, lift to wake. So you can lock the phone now. And when you pick it up, it's automatically going to unlock and it's going to look for your face immediately. So that's something that's really cool because you could automatically lift the phone and unlock it. Now we do have, you could, you could actually turn off the Google assistant button on the side, but I really like this button. What's the weather right now? It's just a really quick way to get information. And then you, you could have this option where a new message will make the screen bright, right? So I think that's pretty cool. You also have your sensitive controls on here. And when you go down here for power controls, you have your, you can turn on show device controls, which is really cool, which is going to show all of your devices connected and um, to your, to your, all the devices connected to your phone. And you can gain access with this and just hold the power button. And let me just show you. So this is actually it right here. And the device controls will appear down below when you're listening to music and stuff like that. And while we're in here, I usually go to accessibility and then I turn the mono speaker into combined channels. So it actually gets a smidget louder when I'm listening to audio from the device. You also do have some really cool options like flip to silence the phone. When your phone is ringing, you could just flip it upside down like that. And the, the phone will silence. You can also do three finger screenshot and basically you sw swipe down with three fingers and it's going to take a screenshot of whatever's on the display. And then you also get, do get the, st the three finger split, which I did mention earlier in the video as well. And then the last feature from here is the quickly open camera with your power button. So you just want to double tap that and you do get the option to see your, your camera, right? So believe it or not, this device does have app lock protection. So for everybody who's trying to live that life on the edge, you all you have to do right here is go to your settings, right? So let me just show you, go to security and you're gonna go to app lock, which is right here. Hit that. And basically now you could pretty much lock any app that you want. Maybe it's a banking app. In that case, it would make sense, right? Anything that has to do with like personal information um, you know what I'm saying? Your bank account, the Chrome browser, maybe you don't want someone seeing your most recent emails. You can lock that. So let's say, uh, you know, anything, cash app, you know, something like that. And pretty much that's pretty much it. So if you try to get into, let's say like cash app or something like that, let me just see what happens. So you hit that. But basically you have to go here where it says uh, open encryption and you can set a digital password pattern or complex pattern 
and then use your fingerprint to open the app once it's encrypted, right? So you would just set up a digital password and then go ahead and you can get that started after that. Another cool thing you could do is go into app pinning and just make sure you turn that on because it's off by default. So basically when you go to the most recent apps by swipe, swiping up, when you're here, you could pin an app for somebody like a kid. Basically you just hit the pin option and no matter what you do, right, it's gonna be stuck on this display. You can't get out of this app. So no matter what you do, you can't get out of the face the YouTube app right now unless you swipe up for three seconds, right? Three seconds, and then it's gonna need your pattern, password, or pin or something. Then you hit your fingerprint, and now you can get out of there. Now another useful if, uh, feature for this device is inside of the keyboard, right? So let me just show you what that option is inside of the keyboard. You wanna So essentially what you want to do when you get inside of Gboard is go ahead and turn on the preferences for number key row keyboard. You could show your emojis as well. You could show emojis and symbols right here. It has left-handed mode, right-handed mode, emoji stickers, and it also does have emoji fast access row, sound key press, and haptics on key press, as well as pop-up on the keys. So let's just do a quick Let's see how that looks, right? So you get your numbers up top, then you get your, your emojis down here as well. So it's just really, really easy to get to, right? Everything is really easy because you got your numbers and then you have all your stuff up here. And it's just very, very um, nicely laid out for you. You get the one-handed mode floating keyboard, right? You could just put that anywhere you do so desire, right? And, um, you know, that's really cool that they have that feature there. Now, another thing that they should, you probably should learn about is the voice typing for the keyboard. And if you wanted to do a voice note, it's really straightforward, really easy to do that for the voice notes. So let me just show you how you get the voice notes to work on here. All right, so essentially to do a voice note, there's gonna be a microphone at the top right hand corner. You just wanna hit that and then just use once or you could do it just when you're in the app. So I'm gonna do it just this once. So what time did the Knicks play right now, today? Actually, we could do that right here. And because the voice note microphone is right here, you just hit that for Google search. What time did the Knicks play right now? The Knicks will be playing the Pistons today at 7.30 p.m. So another really cool feature is with home wallpapers. And this is for the effects, right? So you do get this option right here where it says shake to align icons. And then these move over and it slides over. So let me just show you what I'm talking about. You can see the layout here. You shake it and then it aligns all the icons. So it's a quick way to organize icons and things like that. And you could just do that for everything if you do have icons on pages and it's a bit sloppy, right? So you could just rearrange those and everything is now organized. So then you can, what you could do is go into effects and this is where you can change the different ways to it looks when you're swiping across screens, which is kind of cool, right? So you get these different ways to see it and this one looks like a book. So I'm gonna, I'm, that looks pretty cool. I'm gonna leave it like that, but that's definitely pretty cool to play around with. And you could even go a layer deeper right here and go into effects one more time. But this time, instead of choosing effects, we're gonna choose the launcher settings and this is where we have the five by five layout four five by four four by four and we do have add apps and icons to home screen so that whenever you download an app it'll be downloaded to your home screen automatically you could customize the icon of the app you customize the name of the app and the size as well you get you know um, the app tray or not and then you also do can change the length of the name display the name at the end in a single line or something like that and then app lock will basically lock apps that are on your your phone so you can't move them around and you can also display the names of for apps located in the bottom row for the dock app so that's something that's cool you could just customize your launcher completely on here now another feature i like with the camera is this google um the google lens is built right in so if you want to figure out what something is 
you could just take a picture of it, right? You could just take a picture of it and it will give you different different things that you could choose from, right? So it actually recognized exactly what this was and it shows you where you can get it and stuff. So this is like a little this hand squeeze stress ball toy and they have it right here. So you could actually find that online but actually having to search because you know the google lens is going to identify what you're looking at and then help you find it a lot easier which is kind of cool and one of the other things i like is this device does have an intelligence bar scanner on this device so if you, you go into the camera you go to more it's going to actually show that right here and then all you have to do is hit intelligence scanning and then look for the barcode and then just put that right over top of it and then you can basically just open that up, right? And it will just open up directly to the application that you were trying to download. And another thing that's cool is that if you're taking a picture of something and you're not happy with the colors that it's giving you when you're looking at the picture, you could actually go to the filters right here and it'll actually give you the right type of temperature that you're looking for for the picture right here so you could choose between the filters and it will adjust the color temperatures to the one to the color temp that you're going for much lighter much darker much more saturated much more bright maybe you wanted some monotones on there or some grays but whatever you're looking for you're going to be able to find it or you could just choose no filter but i think it's pretty cool that they do have that there but one of the things i like to do when i'm inside of the camera is actually uh, change this option right here where it says touch shooting so you could actually turn that on you could also turn on your location as well as zero shutter delay but one of the things that's cool is the volume key controls I have set to zoom you could set it to shutter or volume but when now when I'm taking an image or picture or something I could just hit the volume row to zoom in on the shot so you know that's pretty cool and then you could just take the shot right there with that zoom feature and then zoom back out with the bottom firing rocker. So I think that's pretty cool. And you could easy, even get to your wide angle camera a lot easier with that option too. Now there is a hidden game on this device cause it has Android 11. So you just hit Android 11, tap that. And then what you want to do is wind the wheel three times. So one, two, and then three. And then you're going to see this cat here at the bottom. And that means that you've activated the cat game. So long hold this option. And then you can see we have device controls right here. So you have cat controls. So you could set that and you can actually add water to it, add food to it and save. Then you can control how much water you give your cats. You could give them a toy to play with. You could feed them right here. And then you could see all your different cats that you've actually accumulated through time, which is pretty cool. And then once I actually did that, now I have like, three cats here which came through and um you can see right here that i have about this is the first original cat and then i have six all together so this game is pretty cool to play around with and um you could definitely add those cat controls to your device and save them so right now i'm using the gestures where i can swipe back with from the side menu or swipe home from the bottom menu but a lot of people like the old school way so you can also use the three buttons and customize the bottom right so you could customize the bottom change the color to your personal preference right you could have a bunch of colors there and then you could change that option right here which adjust the colors with that little man on this the bottom left hand right hand corner i, can't, I don't know if you can see that um but it has a bunch of options here to choose from as far as, as far as changing the colors on there you could also switch the layout right here to your personal preference um, but I definitely do prefer the gesture nav because it's just a lot more easy, right? Another you could, thing you could do is stop certain app, um, notifications from certain apps. So just go to apps and notifications. And what you want to do is you could, you could see that you have all of these apps right here. So let's just say you were getting a notification from Solitaire and you could just go to notifications right here inside of the app and then turn all of those off right so you won't get any more notifications when you could uh allow the notification dot you could just turn that off as well so now anything you could click it off of that and it'll say all solitaire notifications and you could just turn all of them off if you don't want to get notifications from that app
Now, another thing that you could do is go inside of this option where it says notifications again, and it's, it's going to say something like chat bubbles, right? So you want to, if you want to turn on chat bubbles, you could turn that on or off. So you could see right here bubbles and it says allow apps to show bubbles and you could turn that off if you do so desire, right? And it does give you your app notifications right here. And you could just turn whichever ones you don't want to be on for the chat bubble off. And another thing you could do for those app notifications is when it says right here, application notification management, you can actually turn them all off or on depending on your personal preference. So you can see they all went away when I did that. When I when I went in and I and I hit this and turned it off again, all of those disappeared. So if you didn't want to receive certain notifications, you could just turn them off from here. And then from the lock screen, you can have this option where it gives you the option right here to hide silence notifications or not show any, don't show any notifications. So this one is set for show conversations at default and silent. So it'll show some of my notifications when they do come in as well. This device will also let you take the notch off of the device and add a big forehead to it. But I kind of like how the notch punch hole cutout looks right there. And another thing that's pretty cool is inside of battery, you get your battery savings options. So I kind of like playing around with that when my battery is almost dead. So that's pretty useful. Let me just show you what that looks like real quick. So in order to get to your battery, you just go into system and then you can see right here, it has battery and right here you could add your battery percentage so so you can see the number of battery you have left hit these three dots and you can see the usage that you've used on your device right or you can see mine has been up and down because i've been charging it with the wireless charging whenever it gets low I i'll put it on there and then you have your use battery manager so it'll detect when apps drain battery automatically and you also do have battery savers so when you're low on battery you could turn that on and it'll help you get more battery life out of your device and of course i did mention that we do have the three fingers down for screenshot and you can edit and everything like that so you do have the ability to edit enhance um not only that you could you could draw on the, the thing once you you know with a pen or a highlighter or something like that which is pretty cool and you can definitely make notes on there and add text or something like that. So that's pretty cool, right? But the other thing that you can do is when you, when, when after you, another way to take a screenshot instead of swiping down with your fingers is the power button and volume down rocker. That's always been a good way to take a screenshot if you don't, if you forget the three fingers or maybe, you know what I'm saying? If you just want to do it with one hand instead of two hands, you still got that option to do it like that with one hand. And so that's pretty cool, but you could also do it from the top screen menu, right? Cause it has screen recorder on here. So you could hit the screen recording button or super screenshot right here. And a super screenshot will give you screen recorder. It'll allow you to, you can move it right here. You could do something where it says funny. So in that case, it would be a rectangle, a lasso. A lasso tool will allow you to pretty much choose anything you want like that and then you could save it, you could cut it out. It's really cool because you could pretty much cut out any any object that you want with that option. So you would have to go down here and hit screenshot and then you could actually cut this out with the, the funny one, right? Long screenshot is when it'll just take a long screenshot. So let me just show you. You could cut that out. I know I didn't do it perfect, but it's just gonna cut out that little piece and so that's how it would come out. It would look pretty cool. And then you could also do long screenshot, which is gonna be located there as well. So you do get a ton of options just to play around with, right? So that regular screenshot, that funny screenshot, the super screenshot, and then the long one where it's gonna do next page, next page, next page, and then you can hit save. So you got literally like four pages right here on a screenshot so you can see that long screenshot it's going to capture all of that information i probably should have said this early in the video but do me a favor hit make sure you hit the pause button right now and take a break real quick and if you are enjoying the video make sure you give it a, a like but definitely take a break right now maybe 
go to the bathroom and maybe grab a snack or a drink or something like that. Now this next feature is pretty cool because you could open up the Chrome and do two windows in Chrome. So let's say you have the Best Buy app and you're just scrolling through shopping and maybe you want to look at something else at the exact same time. So just hit these three dots. And what you want to do is actually swipe up and get to and long hold right here and then hit spleen, split screen, right? So once you've hit, hit split screen, then you can hit the three dots right here. Well, first select any app just so it's something's there and then hit the three dots and then you want to hit new window. So now you have two Chrome windows on here, which is pretty crazy, right? So now you can do Amazon and Best Buy and you can kind of compare, you know, websites to each other. So, you know, you could do two websites at the exact same time. It could be the same exact website or two different ones. But I think it's pretty cool that they do offer, you know, the option to have like two different, you know, two different websites, two different windows on one one single, you know, um, you know, one single screen. So I think that's pretty cool that they do offer that just in case you want to do shopping and you want to compare two different websites. I think that's pretty cool. And one more thing that I like to do is actually swipe and change windows with this little tab down below. It's almost like a wheel. So you could literally just swipe across and get to your most recent apps that you were using just by swiping on that wheel, right? And it's gonna give you, get you through all the applications that you were using and um, you'll, everything will be there, right? So you won't have to look, pull up the window just to see what's there. You could just swipe through it like a book. So you, it's really easy just to swipe across and get to mo your most recent apps that you were using just like a window so i think that's pretty cool but let's say you just got a message from somebody that you never seen before and it was like a really weird message or something like that you can hit the three dots right here on the other side and you could you could block the message right you don't have to you know continue to have that spam in there so what you would want to do is long hold the person who sent you the message hit the three dots at the top and then hit the block button right there on the top and it'll actually block that person when you're doing a text message. But if you see like a weird phone call that you never saw before, just do the same thing in your call log, long hold that, and then hit that block and report spam button right there on the top. Now, if you really wanted to do someone dirty um, and not reply, like you get these smart replies, right? So this is pretty cool because you can turn on the smart replies and instead of typing out full sentences, they're gonna suggest to you short little phrases that you can reply to with the smart reply like cool thanks good morning sounds great suggested action so you it'll give you different things like share a photo you know start a, a, a conference or you could even check a kick or assistant um suggestions as well so i think that's pretty cool but if you really wanted to do someone dirty and like not respond to their text basically you could go right here inside of the chat features and it has an option where you can undo show um, indicators when you're typing or you know send read responses or you could just turn off the chat features which will not allow the person to know when you've been receiving their text messages and actually when you've replied when you've you know I'm saying read it and stuff like that but hopefully these 42 tips and tricks for the G91 Pro did help you out for setting up your device and getting started but if you have any other tips that you'd like to share or recommend down below make sure you leave those down below as well but i'm going to get right back with you and answer all your questions i'm going to show up in the comment section right now and i truly appreciate you for watching do me a favor hit both the like and the subscribe button as well as the bell icon so you can subscribe with more videos just like this and i'm going to get right back with you later group peace